I had at some point intended to do eventually a series of videos on all the leaders of the Easter Rising and the history behind it, although that will be a somewhat monumental undertaking and people with far higher intellects and far more wit than I have undertaken it. Although you never know, I might hit upon something they hadn't or offer people an insight into it who had never heard of it. In any case, today on the wonderful world of Mr. Simon Webb, we got the idea of what is British. I'm going to use some of the leaders of the Easter Rising to show how contested that kind of term is by sharing a screen yet again, using this wonderful world of Zoom and its great fiddliness. <sighs> a super fiddly system. And the people who made it, who stuck the bar up the top that comes down when you're sharing the screens, um, please find some other way to do it. Anyway, the basic facts of the Easter Rising are pretty well known to anyone who's got a common knowledge of British history and some basic knowledge. Irish Republican insurrection against British government in Ireland, which began on Easter Monday, April 24th, 1916 in Dublin. The insurrection was planned by Patrick Pearce, Tom Clark, and several other leaders of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. I will say before I go on, I would debate a bit of this with Britannica. Quite a lot of it was planned abroad by Clanna Gale in America and John Devoy, which um, they're kind of skipping over. I understand they're trying to do a short article, not a giant dissertation and a thesis on it, but it's worth knowing that. It's also sometimes regarded as the first socialist revolt in Europe because of the presence of the citizen army led by James Connolly. Um, I'm so, so on that. Lenin regarded it as such. I'm not so sure I would. In any case, I'm going to call up Pierce. It hasn't given a link for Tom Clark because obviously Britannica doesn't think he's important enough, but he would actually do for this, and I'll find another page for him from Wikipedia or something. Here's Patrick Pierce, Irish poet and statesman. He is Irish, but if you notice, I'll read re when I skip past his date of birth and death, born November the 10th, 1879, died May the 13th, 1916, Irish nationalist poet, leader, poet, and educator. He was the first president of the provisional government of the Irish Republic. True, he was, but he was also the son of an English sculpture and his Irish wife. If you wander around Dublin, you can find quite a lot of sculpture by Pierce's father in churches and in graveyards. He made a particular habit of um, sculptures on headstones, which are of quite fine quality, especially considering his father had very little formal education. In fact, it's a great shame that his father's sculptures are not better known or better studied. Some of them are astoundingly good quality, astoundingly well rendered especially some of the work he did in churches and altarpieces. In any case, my point is, what is Pierce? Is he British? Is he Irish? Is he English? Is he Irish? He regarded himself as Irish, but was also well aware of his English background through his father, which he mentions in his own work, and mentions it as an influence on him, as his father proceeded from a, a particular background of I would say radical labourer would be what's the one way of putting it. Let's get Tom Clark, another figure. I'll have to use Wikipedia for this. I prefer not to use Wikipedia if I can. I could find other sources, but we'll do for this for now. Clark was born at Hearst Castle near Milford on Sea in England to Irish parents, Mary James Palmer and James Sar Clark. So, uh, Clark also lived in America for a time. So, what is Clark? Irish, British, American? And then there's James Connolly, and we can keep using Wikipedia for the sake of this. And James Connolly was famously born in the Cowgate area of Scotland, or Edinburgh, Scotland, and is famously still highly regarded there. And then we have James, 
was Larkin, who was born to Irish parents in Thoxter in Liverpool in England. So is James Larkin, who was one of the most prominent socialist leaders in the 20th century, English or Irish, your decision. Or is identity mutable and something to some extent we decide ourselves? Or are aspects of both present in him? Or if we want to get really far out, I'm going to call up somebody I don't think most people would have heard of unless you like to study obscure literature. Although I, I end up reading about this bloke quite a bit at the minute because I end up citing him a fair bit. Lafcadio O'Hearn, also known as Kasumi Yakumo, born Patrick Lafcadio O'Hearn. Uh, and I can't read Greek well enough to say to do his name in Greek. I can do the transliteration of it. Patrickius Lafcadio's turn. Irish Greek writer who then moved to Japan near the end of his life and became a naturalized Japanese citizen. I can keep going with this. I can find your other people. Just from Ireland, if I start stepping outside Ireland and finding other people with contested identities or who could be one thing or the other, we could be here for the rest of our lives. There seems to be some idea of some pure Britishness that's churning up on Webb's channel that, well, it's odd. This idea that somehow we, everybody needs to be tracing themselves back to the Battle of Britain and beyond, back to... I don't know, King Canu, or back to the, you know, the, the Anglo-Saxons and the Anglo-Saxons courts and the various kings in the divided kingdoms of Anglo-Saxon Britain. It's getting a bit silly at this point. There's no such person out there, or very few of them. Most people will find sooner or later that their family line will intersect with people from elsewhere. I do find these definitions of trying to do, um, you know, uh, suggest some minimum level of purity get a bit silly after a bit. Webb's channel is infamous for people doing suggestions like nobody should vote unless they have three British grandparents. But then you've got to run into the problems of given issues like the Irish War of Independence and stuff like that. How are you going to define Britishness? It's going to become quite a complicated matter. Those are just a few examples of people where it becomes awkward. I could find you hundreds and hundreds just off the top of my head. So now I'll turn it over to people to answer. You can define what is British. Off you go.